somebody did. Oh, somebody here with a transcript. Um, this is uh, the Flotilla Friday call for April 29th, 2022. Um, um, so uh, Winnie and I have been having a asynchronous conversation and, and, we're, and we're both friends and, and uh, assuming the best, but <laughs> one of the things that happens is is uh, Wendy will ask a question. And there's a couple channels we're we're in, and Wendy will ask a question like, "Can we just make a channel?" And and I came back with a really long answer like, "You could make a sovereign, you know, and that would be exactly what you want." And Wendy's like, "But kind of, I just want a channel, guys, you know." <laughs> so uh, so what happened there, Wendy? And and uh, I I meant to make this kind of a personal apology or or a personal something um, rather than a, a public one, but I think it's fine in public. The, there's there's a, there's two things going on, right? One of them is you and Vincent are just doing a great job of kind of mapping into kind of into kind of the need that uh, Metagroup has, um, and then because the the this group, the Flotilla group, especially uh, Vincent and Wendy and me and Michael. Um, uh, uh, who've spent a lot of time together over the past few months working, you know, working and discussing and working and discussing. Um, uh, I thought, <laughs> um, I thought it was just obvious for Vincent and Wendy that what I was trying to do was to, well, let's do mapping and let's overlay that with this uh, idea of that I have, that Pete has of these sovereigns co coordinating, right? And we can do the same thing at the same time. And there's like almost zero overhead in my mind, at least to do that. And when he's like, but dude, I just wanted to like make a channel. <laughs> Can't we just have a channel? Um, and then there's, you know, there's another another kind of thread going on where um, uh, Jordan and I and maybe some other folks are talking about how to how to both contain and and grow the the conversation on Mattermost and you know there's a whole bunch of other things going on in the background. So so I apologize, Wendy and Vincent. Um, I, I thought it was more obvious what I was trying to do with this, this, you know, let's kill two birds with one stone thing. And you guys are just trying to like get stuff done <laughs> and wondering why there's this, you know, all of a sudden we're doing two projects at once, which look kind of like seem completely different. No, I, I, I really get it. Cause you were, <laughs> you were, you were taking advantage of an opportunity to set a yeah. pattern, right. To yeah. set a pattern. And I was doing my best to do that, but you know, when it gets, everything's moving quickly with meta. Yeah. Right. Yep. And so the conversation starting to get muddled now inside of the, the, the town square. And then it's some of it's happening now over here and some of it's happening. It's like, ugh, okay, yep. now it's just, just getting painful. Right. Like we just need to put it in one place. So that's, yeah. But I, I appreciate I, uh, the whole time, Pete, just let you know, I appreciated what you were trying to do. Thanks, and Wendy. I just am still not sure whether I'm I'm even if, if I've even advanced it down the line. But as you guys can see in chat, we I eventually just I'm like I thought to myself, okay, I'm just going to go on to Catalyst and create a group. I'm going to name it whatever I want to name it. I'm going to just describe it as something so that it has a home that's outside of Flotilla and outside of Meta. And so it has its home. And then it was like, but hey, Vincent, I need you to just be okay with the name, but stuff before it, right? So it just of having these little steps that are no big deal but they just take they take a little bit of time and anyway. the, the whole naming thing i is think it's a really interesting one yeah i think it's kind of like all right it's good enough the name you know sticks at the same time we could probably spend yeah provisional names it's um it'll have to, if it evolves into something else then we'll probably change it um i the current name is mapping for a better verse um I don't have any really strong emotions about that, except for the fact that if it's part of the meta project, I feel like Betterverse is kind of a pun on like better than meta. <laughs> so um, I don't know if that's like self. Um... <laughs> I was yeah, just that... trying to name it something that had nothing to do with meta because we don't want it, right? The whole point is for it to be its own autonomous thing. Right, that that can go in the directions it needs to go in, and sometimes, most of the time, maybe serve meta if that's what we decide. You know, but it doesn't have to. Then, 
then naming it something with meta in it didn't make sense to me, right? Um, so I was trying to name it with something else so it could be so it could live as its own thing um, in people's minds to begin with at the very least. But I'm not married. I'm not definitely not a good title person. I think we need to turn to Michael. Are you? <laughs> Please help with brain. Just like 30 seconds more. Can we just get this done? So, so right now, um, actually, let me go back and answer Mark, Mark Antoine's question real quick. So uh, sovereign is shorthand for an, indiv an autonomous individual or an autonomous group. Um, and uh, this came out of discussions uh, OGM had with Lionsburg uh, in the last round of Lionsburg OGM conversations a year ago. Um, uh, I'm I'm happy with kind of the meaning of the name. I'm not really happy with the 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 um, uh, the word, uh, but so I'm a little bit self conscious about that word. But I use it a lot. Um, so. So we've got, uh, let me share my screen. Um, and this is good enough, I think. So you can see my whole screen, right? Um, so uh, thanks, Wendy. <laughs> there's, a, there's like a homepage now for um, uh, Mapping for a Betterverse. Um, the real quick on the, on the, on the name thing, there's, there's, uh, an interesting problem. I, I was, I was a little worried that in asynchronous mode, we would end up with a name that included Lionsburg or meta project. And I really, really, really didn't want this mapping group to be subordinate to meta project. I wanted it to be a sovereign, right? So that part of the name, um, I was I was really concerned about. After that, I I agree with um, you know the uh, folks who've been saying you know you can always change names. Um, the you can't. It's harder to change structure, but yeah, I I totally agree that a name is easy to change. Um, so I think a next step uh, is also, um, and by the way, it's even on the agenda. Um, uh, it would be really cool to uh, make a finally make a Mattermost channel for um, uh, for mapping for a better mapping group. Um, I also want to note that uh, we've got there's been a long-standing maps and mapping channel, um, which is a pretty good channel, um, uh, and it's been around forever. I think. So right now we've got mapping conversations going on in Maps and Mapping and in Flotilla, kind of. And then there's this third group, map, Mapping for a Betterverse, is kind of going to happen. Um, I think our assumption or our belief or something, my belief, is that the 46 people who belong to Maps and Mapping right now may or may not be. And we kind of have to assume that they're not, they're not um, totally down with being a sovereign. Um, so I, we still want to create a sovereign that's separate from flotilla, that's separate from maps and mapping, that's working with Meta Project. So that's kind of what mapping for a better verse or mapping group um, needs to be. Can, now there's a bunch of people who want to talk. I just want to chime in quick and say, first of all, hi. It's it's uh, been too hey, long. Hey Charles, it's good to see you. I wasn't expecting to be available, but um, another thing it didn't happen, so I'm here. Um, so just just to chime in on what you were just talking about, the different channels, and I'm I'm kind of, uh, I guess one of the main stewards of the map maps and mapping channel and uh, tracking other other such channels in other communities and spaces and cross pollinating. So I'm going to continue to do that and just just to kind of state that here. Thanks. Um, Charles was also one of the first Filipino people. Um, so he's, he goes way back with, with all this. Oh, oh gee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Very awesome. uh, Jonathan. So, um, I think I, I'm a broken record for the idea of too much information is not a good thing. 
Um, and uh, what I propose is a working group that understands the needs of digesting or curating and provides the talent for that. Um, it's just, it seems like almost everybody has too many things on their plate to efficiently or completely deal with all of it. So um, one of the most important facets of that is, is speed, because information gets quickly out of date. So the um, responsibilities of this group I'm proposing would need to understand and figure out ways to provide information that's timely and easily absorbed. And Jonathan, um, the, the group that you're proposing is similar to what we've got now, different? Uh, you're muted. I'm not thinking of it in terms of sovereignty, but rather in terms of um, um, a strong need. And it could become sovereign. It could be a, a group that provides guidance to other sovereigns who are uh, producing lots of very useful information, but it's it, the volume of it is too much for most people to um, stay on top of. And is this, is this, are we creating that group or you see a need for that group and it's not being created? Of the latter. Um, uh, I, I don't disagree with the need uh, and I'm going to make an observation that um, that groups don't get formed because we perceive a need. Um, they get formed because somebody says, I'm going to do, I'm going to do it and I want people to help me. Um, okay, so, I want to do it and I want people to help me. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what I would suggest then, um, I, I have a I have the broken pieces of how to how to start a sovereign um, uh, in a couple places, and I need to put those together. But um, let me point you to some resources. So I think that it's creating these sovereigns. It's it's a stone soup exercise for me. Um, somebody comes with a stone and a pot of water, and it's like, okay, I'm making this sovereign. I'm making this stone soup. Um, who's with me? Um, Got carrots. Awesome. So, so then to, to kind of like think through that, that analogy a little bit more, um, the thing that you need to do is, is, you know, um, post on Mattermost or in Zoom chat that, well, it has to be in a persistent place. You need a persistent call to action, you know, a persistent, you know, here's a group I'm starting, here's its mission, here's who's in it, here's how to get into it. Um, here's the rules once you're in it, that kind of stuff, right? Here's what we're trying to do. So, um, so without that charter, I, I'm going to suggest that you don't quite have the pieces to, to get going with a sovereign. And conversely, when you have a charter, then you know, you're essentially a sovereign at that point. Uh, you're muted still. It sounds like I should take this offline with you. Uh, yeah, I can. I, I, yeah, that would be great. Um, telegram. Uh, yeah, Telegram is great. Beautiful. Thanks. Um, uh, Grace will go to you, but I also want to remember that Mark Antoine, part of the reason he was asking, so where's the lay of the land here? Um, he's got a, a he's got his own sovereign and he's wondering where it fits in and if you know he should have his own sovereign that's doing other stuff or he should join forces with us and and so on and so I, forth. I, I'm working on interop and mapping and who wants to help me and I know you're doing it and the question is 
are we yeah. working together or apart? <laughs> um, let's let's hear more about that, Marc Antoine. But after Grace, later. I guess like I'm kind of I feel like when I looked at that page, like I've been uncomfortable with the concept of the mapping. Which page? The page that you just showed the home. Yep, mapping for. Better. I've been a little bit uncomfortable with the mapping definition for a while, just because I've seen so many people trying to do it. But when I looked at that page, I just felt like we're reinventing Google, but in a weird backwards way. Say more. And I'm, it, we're reinventing a search engine, but in a weird and backwards way. That's what the mapping project feels like to me. Backwards how? Well, Google doesn't have people put stuff into a database and then try and figure out how it's connected to one another. Google scans the things that are relevant to it, which is like everything on the internet, which isn't what we want to do, and then perceives the connections based on the links between those things. And then that's how the map evolves. And Amazon does the same thing in its categorization program. It perceives the links between things rather than having a manual mapping process. And so I feel like there's something really backwards about the way that we're approaching mapping based on the advancements in technology that exist. And maybe I'm just in the wrong group. Maybe, maybe not. I and and um, your your observations are really appreciated. Um, uh, if if I can kind of give a quick boss to what Catalyst, what I think Catalyst is doing, and then maybe we'll, Wendy will do that, and maybe Vincent will end up doing it best. Um, uh, all of us in the Flotilla group perceived a need to not have somebody map, but rather have a place where I can announce, hey, this is the stuff that I'm working on. Um, and these are the kinds of things I'm interested in. And I would love to get help or I would love to, you know, try to find other people who could help me. Um, so it's, it's, it's an artifact of kind of the process and where we are and stuff that it looks like mapping is an extractive process in a way. Um, it's, it really started as more of a publication process. And Vincent is super, super careful to think about um, what the people in the directory want, how, how, the, how private they want their information to be published. And he's got um, multiple privacy levels of publishing to a very small set of people or a larger set of people or you know public. Um, so, um, my thought about that is, oh, now we're reinventing RSS books. I, I I'm sorry, but like, that's like, like, yeah, that's how it feels to me, like, like, right? Like, yeah, 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 <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, and microformats, uh, and blog rolls, um, and all of that. Yeah. So it's like, I, I don't know. It, I, so one of my you know, I know some of the people from microformats. Microformats was like after RSS and, you know, before, I don't know. So the microformats people said, hey, if we just mark up our HTML pages, our blog pages with a few, like a little bit of extra tagging, um, we could have, uh, we could have aggregators come along and aggregate that all into a directory. And so we've, you know, for a long time, we were talking about uh, there's, um, uh, there's a thing named after flocks of birds. Um, uh, for a, a while, we were enchanted with uh, murmuration. Murmuration is kind of the next gen uh, microformats, you know. And I think looking at the the early murmuration stuff, I don't think they ever heard of microformats. But also, in a sense, they were doing exactly what Tontek and all, all those people were doing with microformats, right? So we were like. Okay, and for a long time I was going, you know, all we need kind of need is to have a schema and then I'll write the aggregator. And so um, Vincent is farthest along at having a, you know, a schema and uh, 
collecting information and also trying to steward it very carefully for privacy and things like that. And so um, the, this is where the, the heart of the, um, uh, of the progress, the, the most progress is Vincent and, and now Wendy um, just poking, you know, pushing forward with Catalyst. So Wendy? I mean, the problem is a real problem. It's just there's so many different approaches to how to look at it. That's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a lot to say. <laughs> yeah, so I, I just, I feel like, um, Grace, it, you bring up a good point. And, and I've been, to me, this is one little nugget of a much larger thinking process that I've been doing for the last 10 years, but I'm coming at it from so frustrated with how knowledge is organized uh, through technology, right? So Google being overwhelming, right? A lot of the platforms being overwhelming or not, don't have good UI, UX or whatever. Don't make me, it's not, aren't intuitive, right? And, and so I, I hear in what you're saying, first of all, why are we just creating another Google or why are we just like, what is, where's the gem in all of this? Or is it just kind of like, you know, a, a, another slice and we're gonna end up with something just as messy? right, is kind of what I hear in what you're saying. I, and I appreciate it. I think what I'm holding on to that isn't necessarily evident yet in these initial steps, so, but is a vision in my head that's really clear, is I wanna to get to a place where I'm not being presented a map or a visual. I get to create the map and visual that works for me, right? And that starts with curating the information that works for me and then being able to put a visual on it in any way that works for me, right? Now, wave a lot of magic wands, you know, cause there's a lot of flexibility in what I just said, right? And there's a lot of stuff and, and technology just isn't there yet to serve the individual while pulling from a collective crowdsource mass of data at the same time. You know, it, it, that combined with a bunch of other features and, and capabilities make what I'm talking about really go down to the roots of needing things like blockchain, holochain, and some other things for the ways in which and the levels of privacy and all the complexity and what happens if people disagree, what happens if two people edit information at the same time, what happens if, you know, you want to slice it this way and someone else wants to slice it that way, can it, can it come at it, can the, is the data structure in a way that can come at it from both sides? So trying to pull that hornet's nest apart <laughs> a little bit and go, and, and respond instead to ex what is needed by communities right now and what's a way that we can provide it that has this thinking under as an underpinning, even if it's not showing yet. And that's where I think Pete's comment about how far Vincent's come, even if we're not seeing it yet, what Vincent is doing with Catalyst has all those underpinnings and, and, and so all the, some of the thinking already in place so that as other technologies come, catalyst can take advantage, right? And so to me, this is one kind of oversimplified little project that, that uses some of that capability that helps us to start to figure out where the sticking points are. Does it mean that we have to put in the data again? Yes. Do we all want to do that in the future? No. Do we want to have one, one uh, like our own personal space where I know my data is private and I put it in once and it's my wallet for whatever data. And I give it, I let that information flow out to whatever apps I want it automatically and seamlessly scoops that up and presents it to me in ways that I've checked off that I want. Obviously we're just not there yet. Right. So this is my effort to, to begin a bridge. It's not even a bridge to begin a bridge from where we're at with combined with what's needed right now, sooner rather than later. And how can we take one step forward? I'm uh, hearing you and I'm often very frustrated in this group <laughs> because on the one hand, uh, I totally agree with everything Wendy said, you know, we've had the conversation obviously uh, about the need to have our own, each our own map, our own sense-making map and to be able to combine it. For me, that's been the uh, philosophical stone. And, and that means when we're talking about philosophical, about combining maps and, and that means comparing maps, analyzing maps, where do they differ? How do they, where are they joined? How? I mean, you need to be able to talk about these things. And uh, this is not an RSS. This is not in any micro format. This is not in any existing standard. 
I don't think it's even in knowledge graphs. I do think that knowledge, something above knowledge graphs is where we'll be able to unify information at a deeper level, uh, where we're able to do the meta statements about statements in knowledge graphs. Um, and that's what I'm pushing. And I say I'm frustrated because um, everybody here is aware of the problem. I don't think everybody's will, uh, not everybody's willing to go all the way to what I see as the solution. Uh, but we're still having the conversation. What's needed for this high level mapping to happen? And for me, that's really important. I mean, these are people who understand what the problem is. Even if we don't agree on the solution, it's less important than understanding the problem. And I'm absolutely convinced that existing formats and standards are not cutting it yet. So I have so much more to say about what's in there, but enough others can talk. Yeah, so Grace, I'd like to uh, share, I appreciated your comment in the matter most, and I don't think you were there, but we ended up discussing at the last mapping meeting, uh, this the idea of like use cases for maps. And I think without without clear use cases, like you said, uh, it's hard to kind of be grounded in any sort of mapping activity because yeah, there's so many maps have been just created just because it's cool and people like seeing themselves, uh, which in of itself has some value, but um, it's there are so many different use cases that I think the mapping group has um, sacrificed the specificity of like we're going to try to collect information for this specific use case in order to create a data set which can be then kind of split up and used in different use cases in the future. Um, and so there's like a balance between like having a very focused use case that's like, nope, we're ignoring everything else. We're just going to um, make a directory of products so that people know what tool to use when they have a problem. Um, like pro something like product hunt is like, I I'm almost annoyed at how simple it is, um, but it it's really successful because it it's very easy to describe in one sentence. It's focused, uh, it knows who's it's, who its target audience is. It's about people who like finding new products and upvoting or downvoting them, and that's it. And, um, you know, that's not creating a knowledge network. That's not, you know, it's not solving some of the problems of like helping people find something when they need it. It's doing it in a way that's based on like kind of typical like discovery feed where you have to go back every single day. And so, um, what I see being the goal in the short term for this like mapping subgroup is um, how can we create um, a database which can support the creation of multiple maps, which can help us see what roles we are already occupying in the kind of you know meta project of um, you know working towards a more equitable regenerative world, whatever the goal is of the meta project which I just put botchered, but like, what are the roles that we're filling? Where are the gaps? Like, where do we need someone who does this specific thing and they're not on the map? So we need to like put energy into finding them and whether that's like people of a specific, you know, uh, race or people from a specific country or people who have specific skills, right? Where are the gaps? And then um, who's already here working on the same thing that way. And we have a clear path to be able to like, see if we can collaborate and not um, have duplicitous efforts. So I, I think we should try to capture that. Um, the transcript is a little wonky. Um, we should try to capture that into that. That's the mission statement for um, mapping for a better verse, I think. And that would be awesome to have written down. The, the what was said and what was said in the chat, I think. I don't know if you've been following. Yep. I love the way Michael put it as well. But yes, we need to include both. Thanks. But um, I, I do want to make sure that I'm clear of the about the distinction that we're making between mapping and you know, information processing, which is very much related to mapping and potentially 
serves the meta project and and serves everyone it's like a a, a bigger longer quest that all of us are probably engaged in in some way some of us more particularly than others i mean i i don't see um I guess, you know, what, what I felt like Jonathan was bringing up felt to me something different, you know, the, the, the kind of curation question. And, and then I, I know the edges here are fuzzy, but the, but the, you know, composting, sweeping everything up, curation, feeds, you know, uh, command, command of filtering by, by users is like a huge, a huge thing to tackle for society, you know, for, for like, I mean, it's, it frees Jerry's brain. It, you know, it's, it's all these things. And I feel like that is very much what, what Brad's working on, what, you know, Factor Imperfectly is trying to do with feeds. That, that's a thing that, exists within maps um, and involves information mapping on a granular level, but isn't the kind of mapping it seems to me that we're wanting to do in the mapping project, but rather, you know, I, I don't mean I don't mean to separate them like they're unrelated, but I, I just don't want us to bite off more than we can chew in either case or be duplicate duplicative. And I don't know if I'm misunderstanding something, but I just want to kind of make that distinction, if indeed it is a distinction. I think it is. Am I next? Or, or Mark Antoine? You're next, you get your hand up first, Brad. Um, I'm a little late to the conversation, but, um, and I mentioned this in my last, uh, when, my, my first meeting last week. Um, when we talk about a database, do we, do we know what, kind, what the actual database is? Um, and the reason I ask is, I mentioned last week that my hammer is craft databases. And I, and I think that there's something that would simplify this conversation a lot if we, first settle on how do we want to represent entities and relationships, right? And because if you, I mean, if you can, if you have a kind of a common structure, I mean, graph databases are beautiful because you just have nodes and edges, right? And nodes have, are entity types, right? So you can have relationships between people and people, people and content, topics and people, groups and people, you know? And, and so I think that there's a real, simplifying uh, approach here where if we could agree that everything is just going to be nodes and edges, for instance, then anyone could write, right, anyone could load the database with whatever types they want, they can query it for whatever types they want, they could, you know, um, I mean, you, a new query you, you'll have me as a dissenter there, sorry. <laughs> sorry? You'll have me as a dissenter. Okay. I think databases don't cut it we need recursive hypergraphs we need i'm sorry what recursive hypergraphs uh, we need to be able to have an edge leading to many edges or many no like the edge node distinction i think is a mistake is a okay, fundamental I mean, that, that's mistake. fine I'm, I'm not i'm not necessarily saying those you know graph databases are it i'm just saying that if we i can no, see but, but, but to, a lot of what the, the question you ask is graphs. do we agree on the data model and unfortunately the answer is no right now vincent is using relational you're using graph. I'm using. I'm pushing for recursive hypergraph. We don't have that basic agreement. That doesn't mean we cannot reach it. Doesn't mean we could not should not reach it. But unfortunately, at this point, we don't have this. I'm happy to switch uh, to recursive hypergraphs. I'll, I'll I'll learn I'll learn up on them. Um, Vincent is. I, I would say Vincent is actually using more something more like uh, object. Um, Fair. He's, he's yeah, essentially implemented. But anyway, my, my point yeah, there document. was that that. Um, if we have a common substrate that is, you know, relatively simple and understandable, that, that can represent all the different kinds of things we want, we can, we don't have to have this 
giant knowledge graph that has everything in it if we want to just focus on people and content, for instance, or, you know, I mean, or topics and, and groups or projects, right? I mean, and, anything. And, and that's why the question of use case is important. Different data structures are appropriate for different use cases. And, and Mark just Antoine. kind of clear, there's, so now we're talking a couple different layers, right? There's, there's just the, the data structure um, and then there's the schema or whatever on top of that. Um, uh, and then, you know, there's maybe actual real use cases and things. So we've got a couple levels where we need agreement or, or, or um, structured disagreement or, or whatever. So now because I feel like this is uh, necessary for us to dive into the, the engineering details or the super technical details, but because I think it actually is the most helpful to get more people involved in this conversation, Mark Antoine, my question is, um, is there a way to, in a simple form, represent um, the um, hypergraphs in something like Airtable? in the same way that I could, you know, mimic a graph database in Airtable where it's just like column one is like people on, or column one is just a list of things. Column two is the relationship. And then column three is a, is the thing you're connecting to, right? Um, it's it's, it's is there... always possible. It's always okay. possible to mimic something as something else. Of course, there's efficiency consideration, but right now I'm working on encoding my recursive hypergraphs in Postgres, because that's what that's my favorite hammer. Uh, it could be done in a graph database. It could be done in anything, uh, but dif with different performance characteristics. I mean, is there a, is there an, um, a service or a product that, that, um, that, that provides recursive hypergraphs as a, as a tool? Nope. The closest thing I know, well, there's a few actually. That's not many. There's there was hypergraph DB, which is which? abandonware. Hypergraph DB. Okay. Uh, which is pretty much abandonware. There are ways if you squint to look at, at data log as recursive hypergraph-ish, but without external references to the data log points, their data objects, but, but you really have to squint. <laughs> yes, Grace. <laughs> um, but the question is, yes. And, and by the way, I don't, for me, agreeing on a single database is an anti-goal. Uh, I think we need to be able to refer to one another's data objects existing in multiple objects. It has to be a federation anyway. And I do think it's important for us to be able to realize that some of us will be using recursive hypergraph and we need to be able to have absorbed that in whatever model we're choosing, including, yes, <laughs> objects and uh, relational and whatever. But uh, I don't think having, choosing a database hegemony or a language hegemony. I think those are all anti-goals. We're talking protocols, we're talking. But I think the protocol has to have this notion that at some point we're making statements about statements and comparing maps. And that requires a higher level of abstraction than even graphs. And that is something I'm pushing, I'm seriously pushing much more than I'm pushing a specific technology. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with all that, I think. But we're all kind of trying to get work done. And, and I think the, 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 the key from my perspective is to kind of lay some groundwork that we can all work with where everybody can, you know, try, try something yep. that works for yeah, them yeah, yeah. in a common the, 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 way. The, and that's, that's the other answer I wanted to give Grace about the RSS statement, right? RSS was about posts. And posts are an important object. We all have posts. And many things, such as wiki pages, can be seen as posts, again, if you squint a bit, and not even that much. Uh, people are in others, people in groups and organizations and all kinds of things are another important fundamental object type. When we're looking at knowledge graphs, then we get into the fuzzier abstractions of concepts. and what's a class and how is it defined and what are its boundaries and how do 
if I say that A causes B, how is that is it the same A and the same B as if you say A causes B? And do we are we talking about the same thing? And this is where, for me, that's my opinion. Uh, have being able to go back and forth between the informal text representation of an idea because we that's what we all consume and produce most of the time. And at some point being able to dig into the analysis saying, is this, are we saying the same thing? Because if we want to curate, we need to unify. And, and that means we need to be able to say, hey, this is the same as that. And that means digging into the underlying concepts in the informal hand wavy description of an idea. And this is where I think it's important to get into the recursive hypergraph structure. Is it necessary for people and organization and events, which is what Vincent is doing? Absolutely not. I, I, and that's why I'm perfectly fine with his doing these, these kinds of schemas because at that level of schema, the work is perfectly fine. When we're speaking about projects, it gets more interesting. Is this project useful for this problem? Ah, how do you define the problem? How do you define the solution? Uh, can we fit this project in the way that it can be transformed to become useful to the solution? This is where we need a more careful analysis. And this is not so... Uh, and why do you believe that? Do we have reasons for believing that? Is that a relevant argument? And this, this is where we get into the meta, meta, meta levels. <clears throat> Sorry, Sorry paste I error. pasted some code in the, in the chat channel. It was unintentional, but I, I was going to say you you <laughs> meant to you meant to DM that to Grace, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was pasting something else, and then I hit send. <laughs> I, I wonder. Uh, tell me if this is too soon or too something, um, but uh, I wonder if we can do something really concrete. Um, let me swap my screen around a little bit. By the um, way, Mark Antoine, I'll be one of your first early adopters. So give me something to work with. I'm working on it. <laughs> it's been with vaporware for too long. It will happen. <laughs> Mark Antoine, I want to hear more about that as well. So. So I, I would map this with different shapes if I had more time um, or when I have more time, I guess. Um, uh, but can people see these boxes at least? I have to go, sorry. Oh. Where is Brad? We'll see you again. Um, Brad, what you see now? Uh, so there's, there's three things, I think. There's... Um, the maps and mapping channel, and there's flotilla. So maps and mapping channel is just a mattermost channel. Flotilla is a loose association of, of folks who like to talk about certain things. And there's also actually two flotilla channels and half of a wiki and stuff like that. So that's all encompassed in, in kind of this. I'll, I'll draw more boxes maybe around it. So then there's this new thing that we're talking about called mapping for a better verse. Uh, which is right now Vincent and Wendy doing a lot of work together, kind of in discussion with Met, uh, the Meta Project and kind of, you know, just doing their own thing. So, um, so I think we have a proposal kind of. Mapping for a Betterverse has, um, has a web page right now, a, a, a group, actually a group in Catalyst. Um, uh, and we also, it, it also needs a Mattermost channel um, because it's got conversations leaking all over the place right now um, to nobody's benefit, kind of. So, um, so do these three things make sense separately like this? And I, I think, so, so then maybe to go one level more kind of, I kind of had a hope that mapping for Betterverse and the Meta Project would have a, a pretty tight agreement about doing mapping. I think the truth of it is a little bit different right now. Vincent and Wendy are, are hell bent on, on mapping the heck out of stuff, including the Meta Project especially, but it's not quite, it's, it's not quite as firm, um, like, like they're not, 
they didn't accept a contract from Metacon, Meta Project to do work. Um, it's more like we're doing work and a lot of it is aligned with the Meta Project, but it's not a gig yet. Let's not go that far yet. We're not, we're not that far. Um, differently than, um, uh, differently than uh, CSC, for instance, CSC is, is more or less me. Um, and by the way, just for, um, CSC is a sovereign and uh, it's got a pretty, pretty point, you know, pretty specific uh, thing that it is. Um, and for different reasons, part of it, the, the governance structure is very simple. It's kind of uh, me as benevolent dictator and a few other people who, um, who are, are pleasant and, and uh, help me figure out the right thing to do. Um, CSC does have an agreement with the Meta Project to provide um, uh, channels, space for channels uh, for Lionsburg, you know, Lionsburg channels. There is a, a, a fairly firm agreement between CSC and Meta Project. I'm feeling like mapping for vetiver is it's, it's more informal than that still. Um, there, you know, mapping for vetiver, vetiver is, for better for is, hasn't really agreed to like deliverables and stuff like that or timelines or, or something. Um, I, I would also observe that Meta Project does have, in the same way that they, they needed, uh, you know, they needed chat channels and it's going to go somewhere and CSC said, you know, it could be us. Um, it could have been someplace else. It could have been another Mattermost instance or discourse or discord or whatever. Um, Meta Project, I think, does have a need to talk to a, a sovereign that, let me dupe this one. Um, um, uh, it kind of needs a little bit more specificity or a little bit more firmness about deliverables, I think, than, than it's, then it, it needs something to do this and maybe it won't find it. I don't know. Maybe they'll kind of, um, they'll kind of plunk along with mapping for a metaverse and maybe some of the flotilla um, flotilla folks or whatever. So does that all kind of make sense? Are we kind of all on the same page? Um, I'll stop my screen share and to, the, the thing that is still could you add on that diagram actually I think it's a useful sure diagram. Uh, who's interested in interop and protocols in there because I know that some of that conversation happens in Flutilla and I'm trying to understand exactly what does the meta project want protocol for that's still a bit unclear to me is it only for mapping is it for um I think the I think there's an underlying assumption that the meta project is meta enough that any project that's going to come in and do mapping within the meta project can't do it in a way that's not interoperable. It just kind of like goes against the entire uh, psyche of, of the, of the, but, of but the project. But we're speaking about interrupt of mapping. Right. So that was kind of a thing where the meta project was like, we need to have a map. And then, um, you know, Pete, Wendy, myself were like, okay, like, you know, we should um, create a directory that allows for interoperability and lots of other maps to be created from the same data set. So that was kind of just something that wasn't asked, but something that like we want to do and we have a good use case to do it. And we want to do it in a way that's interoperable from the start. Right. And my, my um, I, I telescope something really fast. Um, when I saw mapping for Vetiverse, especially Vincent and Wendy starting to do stuff and starting to use a schema that they need, you know, they they have, you know, they have need for a schema because they're putting stuff into it. Um, I was like, oh wow, you guys are also going to be the mapping standards body. Um, so you know that that collapsed for me in a way that I think is not not yet appropriate. Um, I totally agree that Meta Project wants mapping standards it wants a bunch of standards right another one is project templates and and uh, project management reporting and things like that um uh those are the like those are also like super critical right now 
Um, bet. Um, bet can, can where we, we are we, right uh, now. My box where we are, since I see that we have other providers like Factor, which is fine. Add hyper knowledge. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just want to um, to throw out the idea that that hyper knowledge and factor and new and possibly Jonathan's curation project exist over. Well, I won't speak for hyper knowledge. You know, Mark Antoine, you, you weigh in on that, but exist to the like the, the right of this chart um, in that, you know, we're, I mean, I think there, there are aspects of group relationships and, and, and matchmaking and event doing and participant, you know, a much more, you know, stuff, stuff that, that, um, that, Catalyst has been much more, you know, vibrant in and and is at the core of a lot of the the more human qualities of tapestry and and catalyst and you know intersects with with Wendy Elford's work that isn't trying to be um i don't know a, as much of a means for for granular filtering of external stuff external and internal stuff and you know con tools for controlling and sifting information and i do think there's um there's a there's a job to to be done that is very much interoperable that relates to things outside that that Brad and Mark Antoine and Jonathan and I not, not to the exclusion of of and, and you Pete with massive wiki I mean I think there's there's something there too and I don't mean to disassociate it from mapping but I don't I don't think it's effective to lump everything that all of us are talking about into one thing. Cause you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like I, I want to contribute to what, what and support what, you know, Vincent and Wendy are doing, but I don't feel like it's, it's in any way at, at odds or, or, not not harmonious with um with the thing that i'm talking about it, it, it's it's i i think what yeah. i hear you saying michael and and to, to super simplify it you that's a good example mapping for a better verse um is a is a little sovereign that's doing some great work that's useful for meta project right now but mapping for better verse is not catalyst and it's not tapestry um, and Catalyst especially is a good thing where you can go, you know, there's mapping for a better verse, which is kind of similar to Catalyst, but only part of Catalyst. It doesn't have, you know, doesn't really, mapping for a better verse isn't really talking about calendaring and event artifacts, which Catalyst is really good at. So I, and, and this for me, I don't know if this is gonna make much sense for most people, but this, this for me is, like when the the reason CSC exists separate from OGM even, for instance, is CSC does a, a, a very small number of things and it wants to do them really well, right? It provides a Mattermost server and it provides some other things, but you know, there's other stuff that I do that's not CSC. So it, I think it's important to like delineate these little sovereigns that are doing something point focused. Um, and sometimes, sometimes maybe that's an internal project of a bigger project, but sometimes maybe it's better to think of it as a sovereign and then it can gather steam and energy and, and carrots and potatoes and stuff in, in its pot separately from other things. <coughs> yeah, I would, 
Michael, did you want to add something before I <laughs> um, jump in? Yeah, I did just just um, want to to say that. Well, no, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it. Go ahead, Wendy. Okay, yeah, I, I to me, I, I'm seeing this in my mind as, as what stage we're in, right? And different projects are in different stages. So mapping for a better verse, you might say was literally just, you know, that just had its inception. And so the pot of the stone soup, that's the all that's there. <laughs> so we've created a pot. And now what gets put in the pot next, and, and therefore what kind of soup we choose to make together depend on who comes to put something in and, and what, um, what the needs are of the community that are, <laughs> that are starting to stand around and look at the pot and go, Ooh, something's happening. Um, and I think that's, okay. I'm okay. You know, I think that there's an advantage to that, that we need to find our way into being okay with that and not codifying it too soon. Um, at the same time, we need to put some boundary. There needs to be a pot. If you start throwing vegetables on the floor, you're not going to get anything. So, so right there's so we're creating a bit of a pot. We're trying to decide what that pot, like what shape that pot takes and where it's going to sit to get the most attention. And then we're going to start putting vegetables in it. Then we're going to have somebody who comes along and says, wait, 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 wait. This can actually all be happen better if we use a totally different kind of pot, right? Or they're going to come in and say, you have rotten carrots we need to start over or you know whatever and we're going to stay and then we're going to start going well if we just cook it longer it'll be fine and somebody else will go, i'm going to start a new pot over here and i think all of that is okay right and and um and i'm a little afraid that if we keep talking about how many pots we need or how many vegetables we really have if we ask people or will people actually even put in vegetables if we put out a pot or anything along those lines <laughs> extend the metaphor however you like that will never actually make any soup so I'm, I'm kind of going, I think it's a, it's an, it's an experiment, right? We're, we're saying this is the better verse at this moment. I'm willing to throw anything into it. I think, you know, we, we, we started to do a little bit of this is the shape of this pot by saying, we're going to start with air table, but even Vincent and I were like, you know, if something else comes along, it could be in two weeks. It could be I mean, to Brad, Brad's point and, and Mark Antoine's, it could be in two years we're the next thing that's that right and we all go ooh we're going to take everything from this pot and pour it into the next pot i i think that's a that's okay i'm looking i i guess my focus and my timeline has gotten shorter short enough that i want to say hey let's just at least see what soup we can we can start to make right and see what that does and then see what that does that draw more people because they smell it and now six more pots come out like what what can happen and being in that space of curiosity about it and wondering where this experiment is going to take us because we don't know what the answer is. I just want to respond to that because I, 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 I apologize because I think I'm not being clear. Totally, totally not suggesting another pot. Um, it, it's more like, you know, yes, you know, we totally, I mean, this, this, this stone soup operation like needs to go and needs to happen and you're doing and the things you're doing so the, the the group relationships and and kind of mapping the way we can all identify ourselves and identify outside things and and figure out who has something to contribute to the pot that's all that that's a thing and you know um, i want to help with that this is not at all across purposes to that separate from and and hopefully contributing to that there's the there's the sort of greater um you know kind of it, it's cta related it's it's the 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 kind of informational you know it's, it's it's identifying carrots that are out there that we don't know exist that you know might be I, I don't I don't even want to intersect it that much with the stone soup so I'll take that back but you know it's just like we all have information that wants to interoperate that's like more like the library than the stone soup and 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 what you guys are doing and what the meta project is is not 
dependent on the interoperability of all the libraries that can, can, can consult. But some of us are working on that kind of stuff and want to make sure what we're doing is both interoperable with each other and supportive of the stone soup making. And so I don't think we want to pile into the, the mapping group and, and try and hold back the mapping group or the stone soup making for that matter by like getting theoretical about hypergraphs versus graph database and, and all that stuff. But we wanna be aware that we wanna coordinate with each other. And I, I'm that, I don't, you know, may, and maybe this is something for, you know, Marc Antoine and, and Brad and whoever, whoever's interested to do that. And I'm not saying that you, you know, Wendy from an everyone's wisdom point of view and you Vincent from a like Trove resource side point of view aren't interested in that also. And we all should be doing that, but it's not a hold up to the mapping operation or the stone soup making. Does that make sense? Mark Antoine, do you want to respond to that directly? Yeah, I okay. Will. I feel like I want to thank jump you. in too. Thank you, Vincent. Sorry. <laughs> um, first, I perfectly agree that, you know, I've been working on this for ages and I both want people to be aware of what I'm doing. And I don't want to tell people, I don't want to block you. I'm not ready <laughs> for the longest time. Uh, do what you have to do. However, uh, there are known patterns of interoperability. There are known protocols that allow better interoperability using existing technologies where it's not waiting for my R&D. Like there's stuff that exists that I happen to know very well and I could be helpful making things more interoperable now with existing tech that I know will be easier than to, to weave into my high level R&D. And so this is why I've been like, please let's talk because I can do things that can help you be interoperable with existing stuff and maybe become interoperable with my stuff when it, ex when it finally exists. Uh, but even if I don't exist, like being, for example, uh, open link data compatible is a, an advantage for any new technology. And I totally, and, and this is not, should not hold you back. It should allow things uh, in the short run. Uh, so that's one thing I want to push. But I agree, you don't want to wait till hyper knowledge is ready. That takes too long. I'm first one to say it. But on the other hand, if we, if we can have a conversation, it'll be ready sooner because I'll know what you need and I'll try to make at least some pieces ready earlier according to specific um, specific needs, because there are so many pieces. Mark Antoine, do we need to do a better job of asking you for that advice? Yes, I will say that. Okay. So um, give me one second, guys. I'm going to, let's see if this works. All right, I'm putting my chef hat on. Um, I'd like to share my screen for a few minutes and, <laughs> and actually step into the kitchen real quick. So let's see if this works. So Mark Antoine, right now we have this Airtable database. Um, right now it's in, you know, each, it's a relation, it's set up as a sort of relational database. There's projects, there's people. Um, we could quite easily create a new tab that's called um, connections or edges. And we can create one that's nodes. And we could, you know, within this Airtable, make a graph, a database. So we could have um, how Airtable works is you could link to another database. So for example, this is like projects here. Um, and so like, let's say, you know, I put tapestry and then you could make the first field a formula. So you can say like, this is the, um, this is the tapestry. So right now it's just kind of like creating one base where you can have 
a list of all the objects. I don't know if that's not the right thing to do, but if you were to do the edges in Airtable, this is just the workaround would be like, you know, you do link to node. This would be the first one. And then you would do node two. And then you'd have in the middle a relationship. And so then you could say tapestry and let's say is um, related to, and then you could link it to the other, the other type. Um, I'm just going to clean this up. In this space, I just want to ask to draw the distinction between, and, and I hope that it's understood, but like that kind of edge between those nodes seems, seems, you know, totally, that's totally mapping, could be reflected in, in graph, could be, re, you know, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't, but, but, I'm, I'm just I, I, that we get that that's totally distinct from this kind of granular knowledge stuff of which there's a whole bunch in the catalyst network in the tapestry in you know factor new network the universe. <laughs> yeah, um, the, 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 right. The, yeah, Vincent, if you if you think you're showing me how to. Uh, Airtable can do what I want. This is absolutely not the answer. It just shows you have no, you don't know what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Sorry. Right, right, right. So I, I was sharing that to elicit a reaction and to be able to help us get closer to where we need to go without talking about what we're doing as an experiment. So I'm curious, after seeing that, do you think that there are, um, there are some experiments that we could run to be able to get closer to some mm, synthesis or so that the mapping work that we are doing, if we do it I've in Airtable, either with nodes and edges or with like different directories that we can be approaching the work that you're doing. I don't think I know the questions to ask. So Mark okay. Antoine, what are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, um, okay. I would, I would not add nodes and edges, I don't see the point because all your tables are already nodes. For me, the node edge distinction is absurd. You have some fields in your tables are relational. And so they act as edges, that's fine. Uh, what I find difficult, and this is why I'm working on hyperknowledge, is it's very hard for me to ask, why did you put that edge in that field? Or could it have gone there instead? You know, when Wendy said earlier, uh, what if there's a conflict and two people to do two different things? Like, can I have a whole field in one of the cells saying, you know, this person thinks this should go here and that person says this should go there. And those are the reasons why it should go here versus there. <laughs> like, I don't think this can be put in their table easily. Yes, it can be done. Of course, we can have another, uh, table, which is comments on, and then have a kind of way to address the, oh, this row cell, this row of this table, row column of this table. But then look, the backlink from that is not natural to our table. And this is where I stay with different performance characteristics. I can't go from this row cells and, oh, by the way, what are all the comments about this? Or not easily, and the filtering and the language on that. It's doable. It's all doable. Uh, the question is, how convenient is it? Now that said, uh, let's be, uh, I think there's many things. Making the, um, exposing your data in a way that is more interoperable. As I said, I'd use linked data because that's what I believe in and I know best. It's not the only way, but open link data is good as one of many standards for interop. Uh, what I'm interested in, if when we're dealing about federation and 
how does stuff in Airtable compare to the same the description of the same entity in another system? And what happens if there's a conflict? And can we talk about why did you use this value to describe this field of this entity and I use a different value? How did that happen? What were the events that went into it? This is not captured by the, a database or anything state-based. You need a history, a log. So that's part of my design. That said, I do expect that in a federation, I'll deal with state-based things like your table and I won't have the history and I'll deal with it by saying history unknown. But I want to be creating systems where I'm able to speak about the history. And maybe I'll have a snapshot of the earlier state and say, oh, look, it went from here to there. And that one went from here to there. So we can at least reason about that. I don't know if that helps you uh, ask the questions I'm asking. Uh, but certainly uh, there's something short term, which is linked open data, uh, which I think is useful. And there's something long term, which is how do we handle conflict and how do we handle history and how do we handle social, what I call social truth, where there's multiple versions of by different groups of what should go there. Mark Antoine, I put a link to um, linked open data in the linked data yes. page on Wikipedia. That's, that's yep, yep. good. Okay, so um, can, what, what advice do you have for Vincent? Actually, before you answer that question, <laughs> I am a very, I need to kind of do it to, to know if I actually understand. So this is what I just did. So I made a new database called Perspective on Project. So there's a link to project, then there's a link to a person. Um, and then there's one question in this case. So it's like, what role do you think this project has? So like, let's say you think the role is, uh, I don't know, mapping tool. Um, so there's three perspectives on the same project from three different people in this database. And then if you go to the projects, you can do a, it's called a roll up where um, then you can say these are the three directory map project mapping tool are the three responses connected to this project. Is that getting closer? Am I getting warmer to what you're talking about? This is definitely this is definitely getting warmer, but you see you had to design it. I want this to be there automatically for any field. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. But yes. Okay. And for all knowledge. And for all knowledge. I, I just have to answer as a person who's not, who understands more conceptually these things rather than technically, going through that experiment of watching Vincent build it and Mark, you respond to it was actually super informative and helpful for me too, right? To understand what the capabilities are in the nuance of different structures and, and technologies and things like that. To me, I'm still, I, I, it makes it easier for me as say a weaver to go, wait, we should pause and talk to Mark <laughs> this beat, right? It helps me know where to insert it because conceptually we're often saying the same things, right? But how, how it actually unfolds, right? And, and when is it important to go, well, for that mapping project, we really need to, to, to talk to Mark, get his, his um, input, or even go the step of thinking about hypergraphs as the, you know, as the way to go, recursive hypergraphs, right? And I don't have enough knowledge in order to understand that nuance yet. So just thank you. That little experiment help, helps me too. And, 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 and thank you for forcing me to <laughs> pinpoint it that way. That was useful because I speak at a very abstract level. It's hard for me to speak at a concrete level. That's, <laughs> that was good. Yeah, that worked out really well. Um, I've got my hand up to have us collectively make a Mattermost channel, but uh, that's a, a, a step in a different direction kind of. So Jonathan and Michael, I, I wanna make sure that you guys go if you're- I would like to go. Um because it's relevant to what Mark and well, what, what we we're talking about, it seems to me, what's emerging is the idea of moderating uh, editing changes. And that um, would address the issue of conflicts, uh, reasons for moving things here versus moving reasons for moving it there, 
and um, finding some kind of consensus. Um, these are, as far as I can tell, extremely difficult problems for human beings and impossible for AI as we know it. Um, and so I'm proposing the idea of a need for um, a group of people to encapsulate that um, knowledge of the difficulty and exploration of solutions. And I've got a lot on my plate, but I'm willing to spearhead this as long as I'm not the only guy. <laughs> Well, so yeah, another sovereign. <laughs> the, 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 I'm part of many groups and I'm exploring this with many existing groups and I totally invite you to come with us. Uh, Yay. Canonical Debate Lab is one group where we're discussing this. Uh, it's very much an ongoing activity for me. <laughs> but, but I will just say one thing. The, the, the consensus is one layer. Like when I say social knowledge, there's one layer where this is the value I put in the set. There's groups, like some are informal, some are formal, but when there's a group, there's usually a social process for saying, okay, what's the group's position as opposed to the individual's position, right? The individuals in the group. And if there's a process, that means there's a process and we just have to follow it. And I mean a social process, which can be computerized or not. And when we're speaking about the collectivity, then there's no process for consensus. And I don't expect there to be. What all we can do is record. Here is where people are at. And I, I don't think here the goal is to have consensus, but to have awareness of this. Here, there is basic consensus on what there is. Here there is, but there's a few maybe fringe opinions or there's actually polarization and the community is divided. In, and uh, main partitions and a few again fringe ones. But knowing that for me is a, is a goal. Uh, the, the, the case where this can be reduced to this group believes that as a group because vote, uh, tyranny, whatever internal process there is, is a totally, is, is one layer, it's an important layer, but it's not the same as the social. And social does not require consensus. And that way I'm kind of, punting the consensus problem. I'm saying groups will choose their process. It's not for me to invent one. <laughs> and the collective doesn't need one. We just need a map. A lot of Marc Antoine's work is around clarity and visibility of you know agreements and disagreements and and comments on the on comments on all of that, you know, comments on an agreement or a, a disagreement with an agreement or an agreement with a disagreement. And and out to any level of recursiveness. So all of that helps you understand a picture. Um, and a simple thing like this group has this consensus collapses and hides a lot of the complexity that Mark Antoine wants to make sure that gets fleshed out. Mark Antoine, I have a, a personal question kind of. Um, when Americans say Mark instead of Mark Antoine, uh, does it matter? Mark Antony is fine. I don't mind translation, but yes, Mark is annoying. Well, we can say we can say Mark Antoine, um, and we don't have to say Mark Anthony. But a lot of times, uh, compound names confuse the heck out of Americans. So yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm Mark Antoine. I'm not Mark. <laughs> That's someone else. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Um, so Mark Antoine is it, even though there's a, there's a dash in it, it's a it's a single name that that we should look at as a single name. Thank you, Michael. Thanks. I. Um, you want to go before we're, we talk about channels? Um, yeah, I mean, got I, a, lot of, I, a lot of stuff stacked up in the chat. <laughs> right, right. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I just want to underline the, I'm, I'm going to, address this, I think, particularly um, to what Vincent was doing in the air, air table 
I do get this is the, the desire to be complete. And, and Vincent, you are, you know, you are creating the unified field theory of everything and, and you're, you're biting off a lot and that's, that's, your, that's your gift and your curse. <laughs> and, um, and, and I'm just, I'm like, don't, I don't want the, the efforts of the mapping group to like get devolved into all the granular information classification, you know, weighting of inputs and stuff that, that those of us who are just like focused on, on sifting bits of knowledge from inside and outside the movement, you know, I, there, there, it's totally harmonious. There's no reason for it to feel like we're, to, to Wendy's point, you know, slowing you down. And I realize that you're part of this group too. I, I'm just dis distinguishing you, Vincent, from the mapping group and its effort, and also disting distinguishing you, Wendy, and everyone's wisdom from the mapping group and its effort. The, the, the knowledge, the, the greater knowledge graph, the library, I was joking, you know, let's not drag the Library of Alexandria on our march up on Washington and Brussels. You know, it seems like the meta project is let's move, there's shit to deal with. And, you know, separately, not really the meta project concern, but certainly something that could help the meta project. We're trying to find ways to share knowledge better and, and use it to activate things. And let's do that. And those of us who are doing that should focus on that. But we're doing this kind of relational people, social movement group, matchmaking, organizing stuff. And I thought, and maybe I'm wrong, that that was sort of a focus for the mapping exercise, not all knowledge. And so um, I hope I'm not a broken record, but that's what I'm just trying to. Let, let, let me talk about this a, a bit. I agree totally with what you, the basic thrust of what you're saying, Michael. I think bringing hyper knowledge into Vincent and Wendy's work is absolutely ridiculous overkill. However, as I keep saying, I think we can improve the uh, APIs of Vincent's work so sure. there's more entry points. Like you already have entities, making them into linked open data is trivial, but also making it clear that these are versioned. Even if you don't keep the past versions, having a last modified, which I suspect you may have already. I don't know. I'm not presuming there. But that makes it easier to know, oh, this is a version. And that means anything that grabs from them has to be aware of the version changes. Uh, can we then think about ways to subscribe to version changes and things like that? And then that becomes, and, and, but there are also articulation points. I gave the example of projects. Projects, when we match a, a, a solution to a problem, the solution problem match is approximate and negotiated. And here, I think articulation with uh, argumentation, uh, evidence, uh, uh, causal links, and the kind of more abstract conceptual stuff I'm doing is valuable. I don't think you should do that. But if you can, if we can think about a way to say, oh, let's connect this connection, this alignment, let's make it into a separate object, which talks to argumentation technology and is aware that there's argumentation technology here negotiating that, is that a good alignment or not, for example, because those are controversial, like known to be controversial alignments versus is this person part of this organization? If there's, there's most often, not always, but most often this is not controversial and a statement of fact, time, time bound, of course. Over. Charles, you wanna go? Thank you, cool. Um, this is great, I'm just, um, 
kind of on the roller coaster here. I wanted to zoom out. I don't know um, how much longer we're going to go. I kind of need to get some food and, and stuff, but um, it's a Friday evening here. Um, but just briefly to kind of, um, it, this could be useful in, in going toward closing today, but like to zoom out in, in, in regard to flotilla, I'm all about mapping. I think everybody who knows me knows that. Um, and and um, also, by the way, I'm, I'm actually involved in mapping the mappers and the mapping groups and, and, and channels and, and all that. So there's a meta layer that I'm coming from here. <clears throat> um, in regard to flotilla though, just because also I haven't been here in a while and I haven't really followed, managed to follow closely, um, maybe broad strokes, what, what's the sort of the percentage of focus now, here and now, and sort of immediately moving forward in, on mapping, and then what else is sort of uh, bubbling and alive uh, in Flotilla? Thanks. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take that, and, and then um, let's make a channel. Um, thanks, Charles, for being here, and uh, apologies for if this time is kind of hard to get to. Um, uh, flotilla, I would say, kind of shifts around, uh, you know, from uh, every, every couple of weeks, we're kind of tackling a new thing. Sometimes we're talking a lot about interoperability and file formats. Sometimes we're talking a lot about matchmaking. Um, uh, recently, we've been talking a lot about mapping uh, as, as the meta project kind of wants it and needs it. Um, I don't, the, the, the thing that the, the through line, the thread that keeps going is that um, mostly we're makers um, and mostly we're making separate things. Uh, so tapestry or catalyst or factor or massive wiki, but we're also really energized about I guess we're not so energized about using each other's stuff, um, but we are super energized about making sure that when people use our stuff, it it talks to each other. So interoperability is kind of a, a big through line for Flotilla, even more than directories and matchmaking, which is kind of the, the charter. And for me, for sure. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, and uh, even, there were there were some discussions I think that that kind of flotilla had with Jordan uh, as as you know we talked through what Meta Project needs in just in terms of general interoperability not not at all about mapping. Um, let's make a channel uh, and um, uh, can, can I, I quickly just super super quick comment? I just appreciate yeah, sure. what you said really back at almost at the beginning about not being subordinate to the in, in regard to the names and stuff that was that, I like that thank you um so uh back towards the beginning of the call um uh mostly well we had a, a few other or names come up um I, I want to make kind of it so so I guess let's make a Mattermost channel. Um, Vincent or Wendy, I think you should do it. Um, I think you should share your screen and do it. Um, uh, obviously, when you have a channel, you need a name. Um, and uh, these are names that have been floating around. I, I would just make an observation that, you know, in the past 45 minutes or whatever, we've been saying mapping group, partly because we haven't really agreed on this name yet. Um, but this one is also easier to say than this one. Um, so um, I, a fix for that is to call this MFAB, but uh, which I, I think is cute. But um, so what's this channel named? And again, you can always change things. One of the um, uh, Charles and I have gone through this a lot, actually. Uh, one of the the consequences of changing a name if i if you look at the maps and mapping channel um it uh -oh. would be easy <laughs> it would be easy to change this name but uh let's see I wonder not if... that one please <laughs> so it's easy to change this name but 
you'll also see that there's a URL that this channel has that, uh, you know, um, for this particular channel, I, I'm using this one as an example now, for this particular channel, Charles and me and other people have been linking to stuff, uh, you know, collective sense commons slash agora slash channel slash maps dash mapping. So as soon as I go, uh, um, you know, if I, I change this. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, I have the option to like hack this URL around and it would make us uh, librarian people like tear our hair out and, and be sad because then we would immediately create a bunch of broken links and in then into the past. So I, I just want to caution us. Um, uh, we've, we've done, I think we've done both uh, things. Uh, some of the OGM channels have changed names and stuff like that. Sometimes I go, you know, this channel hasn't been out there that long. We're just going to change the URL and break some things, but it's a better URL. Um, other times it's like, oh my God, this this URL has been out there and it's so referenced that the URL is going to stay the same even though the name is changing. Um, so having said that, um, and let me share this HackMD again. Wow, cool. Let me let um, me just interject while you're doing that. That that personally in my own sort of silo, um, you know, the space spaces, then I have collected tons of those links for to all manner of different posts in all the channels. And then they're all going to be dead, if you know, whichever ones change. So so just to illustrate that. Um, I, I posted a link to the HackMD, so I don't have to share the screen on that. Um, so what's the name of this thing? I just created oh, a, a Doom poll. I don't know if we want to try doing it. I haven't really done these before. Uh, I just added a few uh, names in the chat. I can end it and relaunch it. Hold on. Should I add some other names before launching this? Um, yes. I'm really liking Map Weavers. I think actually, Vincent and Wendy, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what this group is. What? What? How is it? What's it doing? And what's not quite the same as Catalyst and what's not quite the same as Flotilla or Maps and Mapping. What's it doing that's special? Yeah, sure, I can I can try that one. I, I like Map Weavers for that reason, actually, um, what I'm about to say, because I think what we're trying to do is focus on that particular problem or need, focus on the particular need, which is communities to see themselves so that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. And of course that comes with a bunch of other stuff, but it really comes from meta saying, we need to see, we need to see who the people and projects are. That's kind of where it started. And that fits so nicely in with where tapestry was going, because that was my intention of tapestry that I had heard a need in Winfinity and OGM and multiple places over the many months going, um, we need to, OFC started, Charles started in those, uh, those wisdom Miro boards. I've forgotten, like we, I've forgotten what those were called, but it started there in my mind. It's going, we need something sooner. We're not getting at this fast enough. How can we, all the communities are asking for, how can we see these projects? And what they really mean when they say that is not a directory. They mean something more interoperable that people, not interoperable, more filterable and interactive so that the members can start to weave themselves to each other and so that the community leaders can start to see the holes. And the, those themes have repeated and you know, I hear them a lot in conversation. A couple of us have mentioned that here today in different ways. You know, half of doing a good map is seeing what we've got. And the other half is what do we not, what do we not have that we didn't even see before? You know, where are the holes that we didn't even see? We didn't even know how to ask those questions. So to me, it's 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 that that nugget of it as being more of a mirror, maps as a mirror to individuals, to communities, to groups in a way that serves them, not in a way that serves the one person gen generating the map. Just to chime in quickly, I um to flag something that I think Vincent probably knows more about than me at this point, but um, uh, some of you might recall and, and have been around for the Mapathon in October. And there's another one planned for October. I don't have an exact date. Um, I guess it's gonna be another 24 hours or maybe more, I'm not sure. 
Um, but that's sort of, um, you know, on the horizon, on the calendar, just a, a way to, to, to support our focus and kind of anchor uh, us a little bit. So I just want to flag that. And I think that kind of related to some of what you were alluding to there, Wendy, as well. So the mapathon. Thank you. I think I can't vote because I'm a co-host. Yeah, I can't vote either. <laughs> but I would Here. vote for map, map weavers. Here, not I that, can. Not that I believe that voting is a good way to, to have consensus, but. <laughs> I. Map weaver is kind of. You're going to drive me of, nuts. <laughs> I think it's fine. It's a channel it's okay. name. It, it's, not, it's not more formal than that. And I think the weavers is the spirit of it, which is great. Yeah, That's I think map weavers is. Yeah. Yeah, I vote for that one too. So, um, like Wendy, do you want to make the channel or or Vincent? Uh, doesn't matter to me. I snag mapweavers.org, and I'm happy to give it to whoever. <laughs> so just a, rem a reminder, because I put in the chat um, uh, map whisperers that that happened already back, I, I believe, 2019. There was a regular uh, Thursday call, a weekly call through Dig Digital Life Collective with Jerry Mikowski and um, I guess Michael Linton, Christina Bowen, a, a, a small, but, but uh, you know, it was, it was consistent. And so out of that, those discussions, you're not going to see much there, but that we, you know, Jerry in his way grabbed that domain and um, made that little site. So I think it's just uh, in the mix here. Vincent? I, um, I tried visiting Map Whispers. It doesn't seem to be there. It's anymore. not. Oh, maybe I spelled it wrong. Yeah, I believe it's, it's, this one works. I don't, oh, thanks. It's, oh, it's, maybe it's the www. OK, it, it's still alive, I, I'm pretty sure. I think it lists, uh, if you look at the, the mappers, it's just uh, J uh, Christina, Jerry, Michael Linton, and myself, maybe, uh, that they got on there in the yep, end. But... Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So the th problem with map whispers, it's good too. <laughs> it's Sorry. good. I mean, I'm sure Jerry would be happy, you know, but I think we've, it's fine. We can be distinct here. It's fine for me. Yeah, I'm kind of good with going with something a little new because then I feel like we'll spend another couple of days asking Jerry. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Okay. And if yeah. it was something that he was currently doing, like we no, in the no, world. No. It's you just know, what then, he did at the I time think... and, and he, it's sitting there getting dusty. So it's fine. Oh, Wendy, do you want me to create the channel or? No, uh, I was just about like... to share. I was just letting people. That way I can learn too how to do it. Cool. Okay, Pete, please help. Uh, the plus right under your cursor. Mm -hmm. uh, create new channel. I will grab something I just wrote. So purpose ends up being something people can see when they do channel information. And then the header is what they always see at the top. Uh, so sometimes the header is the Zoom Zoom link for the call, or sometimes it's I. Oh, it's too long. Mm -hmm. uh, I um I sometimes make for a beginning channel. I make purpose and header the same thing. Mm hmm. It's just too long anyway. Um. So we need a little tagline then, yeah. Uh, you could shorten that one if I would paste it back in and just make it. Um, yeah, I can make it, I can match whatever's in um, the... If, if you cut it, um, if you delete everything before assigned value. You just put um, it here. I can change it later, right? Yeah. And okay. so then header is something you always see at the top of the, the channel. And sometimes how about, it's... How about one map to weave them all? Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I think for right now, we'll just do that. Yay. I'm going to so add what I really want. Yay. Um, then you might click add members to this channel. And mm -hmm. oops, and just start adding people. Uh, and I think you don't have to type the at to make it easier. Um, uh, add me and maybe some other folks. Vincent, I think you can kill the poll. It looks like it's still in progress. I mean, 
there's one, two, three, four, five, six. We could still swing it and go to something else if the other four people here vote. So I, You're I don't gunning. know. Okay. Go, I go feel like it. that would. I, I'm just saying I don't want to be the one to like you know destroy democracy or anything by ending the poll before everyone's voted. Is democracy really that important right now? Anyway, <laughs> I don't know which one Michael is. Does anyone know which one Michael is? Michael, it must Gretzman be Michael. Or... MG. Is it M? It's MG. Is it MG? Oh, it's MG. No. no. Uh, it's Michael Grissman, all one word, I think. That's weird. Oh, I voted. Um, hmm, I voted for map weavers. Casey. Oh, oh, you're not. This isn't the vote. This is just the invitation. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Cool. Congratulations. Thanks. Charles, do you want to be in here too? Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Uh huh. Don't, nobody needs more, you know, I don't want to assume because nobody no, needs either. more. I'm a, I have a big appetite. It's no problem. Uh, it's love of all. Yeah. Love of all, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it there. I thought I selected it. Come on. No. Yeah, yeah. And it's oh, okay. no, no, right. out of CB. It's it comes out of CB? Okay. I just don't yes. want to add the wrong person. Grace would probably want to be there too. You're right. Thanks, Stacy. Um, and there's other people. We'll put everybody on here who's on Mattermost and also already been invited to the, to, I'll just go back and do that. If, um, if anyone I, wants to sort of chime in on the maps and mapping channel, I could do it, but I, I'm sort of in another mode, but, but just something. Yeah, I'll post in maps and mapping is what you're, is Great. what you're suggesting, Charles, right? Just alert people that, that would, yeah. Fighting sure. people uh, and, over. Uh, I'll get the Elaine. statement. A little the bit Lions clearer. Town Square and Flotilla. Uh, yeah. Wendy, could you share your screen real quick again? Sure. Um, uh, I'm going to show you a, a small trick um, sure. that you can use when you later um, make that post. Uh, if you start a message, we won't hit send on it. But if you start a message, mm -hmm. hey, folks, um, come over to the, um, you can refer to a channel by saying tilde and then part of the name and complete it. Um, and then wait, what? <laughs> it's better. Um, uh, say that you want to say I've I've created a new channel called. Yeah. The thing that you type right after that is a tilde. And then start typing. It's kind of like doing an at for a person, but it's tilde for a channel. Were you talking about this thing? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. I didn't know what that was called. <laughs> That's why I was like, what are you talking about? Okay, and then just pick it is what you're saying. Uh, you can type it. If you type map, it'll, yeah. So it's, what that does is it, it for one thing, um, if and when we ever change the name, uh, it will change it automatically in the messages. The other more cool thing it does is it creates a link so they can just yeah. click on that click link. Click on it. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I follow and you. go to it. Cool. cool. Thank you. Vincent, you have something to show us. Oh yeah, this is so nerdy, but I'm like really excited to share it and it's gonna Ooh. take a minute. I have to go to a meeting. I just realized what time it was. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Wendy. <laughs> Bye ciao, everybody. Ciao. Thanks for creating the channel. Bye, Wendy. Yeah, Wendy. Ciao, ciao. So uh, this is something um, which Bentley um, helps massively with creating. Um, it's a little script that goes into Airtable um, it works by uh, basically finding anything. I'm just going to filter this. This is a, a list of projects that I just put into the um, the directory here. So I'm filtering it where the URL is not empty. Um, and it's a script that when you run it, it will basically pull the metadata from the website. So you can see like information here starting to, to pop up. Um, so it's pulling the images, the publisher, the um, title, um, and then the time that the information was pulled. Um, and I just think it's the funnest thing ever to like watch this automatically populate the spreadsheet. <laughs> and um, sometimes it doesn't grab an image. Um, and sometimes if the URL isn't in the right format or if it doesn't have HTTPS then it doesn't work. Um, but it's a really quick way if you have just like a list of 50 URLs to get some other information here automatically and save a lot of time doing manual curation work. Um, and 
We also got it to work where it'll um, put the images into um, a gallery, which is really nice. So I'm going to just change the photo field to this meta image attachment. So it will, yeah, it'll, Airtable has this weird thing where if you put an image in a URL, you have to like do work to like manually put it into like the image field so you can actually like view it. So that's the other thing it does is it puts the image directly into the image field. So that way you can have like a, a really pretty gallery um, without much work. So that's the Airtable automation of the day. Very cool. Very cool. Is, is there a name working title for that thing? It's cool. Um, I call it Metaport. It's an importer of metadata, so. Good work, folks. I have to go back and like watch the recording to figure out what we talked about. <laughs> is that is the the um, Airtable document editable directly in itself as opposed to through the Catalyst form? Oh yeah, no. Yeah. So th the reason why we created an Airtable is because that's like a you know neutral space anyone right, could right. edit it. Yeah. Um, we used and I'll I'll share briefly because I have it open. Um, in the Mattermost, I pinned the link in the header to the past calls, by the way. Um, for some reason, it's not sharing my whole screen. I also put in the links here, I have the three main links. I put the direct link to the directory, and then I also put the Miro board. And basically, we use the check-in map as an input for data and then um, there's a button where you could download this data as a CSV and then that was imported from a CSV into Airtable. So yeah, basically that was just one input we could have inputted from a Google Sheet or having people editing directly. The other thing that's um, interesting to, to know about Airtable is it's the only downside to Airtable versus Google Sheets is that you have to have an account to be able to edit um, directly, like directly edit the spreadsheet. And um, actually, I think it's the same thing for Google, but everyone has a Google account, so no one really notices. But basically, I added a third party app called Mini Extensions, which you can put a form here where it um, pre fills the app, this app. And when you click edit, this is actually taking you to a app.miniextensions.com. And then anything you edit here, when you hit save, it's going to take those changes and then save it in Airtable. So like, yeah, people have built plugins to be able to make the like bulk editing of an Airtable without logging in possible, because that's one of the main constraints because it doesn't really align with their business model. They want people to have an account and then they want to know how many people are editing a sheet so that they can charge them. So one of those things where they the only they actually accidentally released a version of Airtable where you could everyone could edit it and then they retracted it saying it was a bug when it was really just like wait no we didn't mean to do this because it totally doesn't align with our business model and we're going to lose lots of money and our investors are going to drop out so so can you um, I, I'm, I'm when I log into Airtable and I had experienced this before and I meant to ask you about it. I'm not, I'm not seeing all the edits that you just made. And also I'm not able to edit, edit it. Michael, if you want to screen share, I'd love to, I think that'd be the quickest way to, to help out or. Oh, well, I mean. I mean, I'm just, it's, it's very simple. I mean, I'm just looking at, at the flotilla meta directory and like I refresh it, I'm logged into Airtable, but I'm not, I'm just not seeing your most current edits. Like, I mean, you put, you put a bunch of stuff in there and like their image logos and they're, um, they're not, they're present on your screen share and they're not present on my screen. Uh, it's just- do you, do you want a screen share? Uh so I can, yeah, I, I'm, you can see. Sure. Hold on. I'm going to be going, guys. Um, much yeah, love. Yeah, I think Happy I'll Fridays. drop out as well. 
Ciao, ciao. Right. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for listening to my rant. <laughs> thanks. thanks for all the advice, Mark Antoine. It's super helpful. Yeah, thanks, Mark Antoine. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm a little, a little annoyed <laughs> at, at doing this because I'm just like all I'm, all I'm talking about is um, yeah. It could be something super simple, or so you let's know see. where you have where you have images. There aren't images, and I'm, oh, and also when I go to edit one of these fields. Um, let me just see if this is true based on this. OK, so there's yeah, two. I think nothing's happening. Yep, so um, there's two things. So one is this is the view only link. Um, so you're actually not in the base. And I don't think you're even, I don't know if you're logged into Airtable. But if you click the Airtable in the top left corner, that'll, that'll tell you if you're logged in. I mean, I was logged in. Let's see if I'm, this this is just from yesterday, and if, if it logged me out, I'm not going to be in that time. So now you want to yeah. click into Flotilla Meta Directory. Uh, oh, you made a duplicate oh. of the base. That's why. So yeah, you're going to want to click on the one with 18 people. Yeah. So now, now you see the top bar how it has like uh, notifications and like the image icon. That means you're logged in and you're editing the base, and. Um, the image thing is if you scroll all the way to the right, there's going to be all these fields that start with meta. Um, so I just did this really quickly during the call. Um, there's a there's a field for photo and then there's a field for a meta photo. I'll, I'll probably end up merging them. But it's all the way to the right. You have to scroll. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's editable now. So that that's cool. Um, that, that was the thing that was happening. And and maybe I had accidentally duplicated it. That must have been it, or I wasn't like Okay. Awesome. Yeah, you could probably, unless you want a copy of it, you can delete the other air tape, Michael. Yeah, no, actually, now that I think about it, I think when I was first discovering that I couldn't edit like days ago, I made a copy to see if I could edit in that. Um, but yeah, if you send out this link, to people who don't have an Airtable account, it'll ask them to sign in. So the other link that you are on is the link to just view it for people who don't want to create an account. Uh, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Great call, folks. Anything else? I think that's it for me. Let's call it good. See All right, around. sounds good. Thanks, everyone. Talk soon. Have a good weekend. Take care. Indeed. Bye. Bye.